family and welcome back to another episode of the Organize My Thoughts podcast and happy new year. I am so excited to be having a fresh start and also that 2022 is over because that year kind of took me out, okay? I don't know about you, but I am ready to see what God has in store. I am ready to execute my goals this year and just to take things one step at a time and one day at a time. So I hope y'all have been well. I know we had replay episodes all of December and your girl needed a break, but definitely those episodes were gems and they were the most played episodes. And so thank you again to everyone who listens every week. I love you all very, very much. In today's episode, I'm hoping we can have an aha coming to Jesus moment together because in my quiet time yesterday morning, God really gathered me. And I mean, gathered me well. Like I was telling you guys, 2022 was a year of a lot of suffering for me and suffering is a part of the Christian walk and it was a lot of maturing and humbling myself and really just trusting that God's plans for me were good like he said they were. Don't get me wrong, I had some amazing times, but there were also some times where I really, really had to lean on God and persevere. And so through that, you know, my mindset is a little bit different this year. But as I went into my quiet time yesterday morning, before I even sat down, I heard a scripture, which was Psalms 139. And this is a scripture that I've read multiple times. It's one of my favorite scriptures for when I feel like God has forgotten about me or I feel like I don't really understand why a situation worked out the way that it did. This passage of scripture really reminds me that God sees me, he understands me, and that I'm really in his care. And so before I share the passage of scripture, I told you guys what it was, but I'm going to read it to you. I want to just emphasize who this episode is for. This episode is really for anyone who has felt like they have done all that they can do. They have been obedient. They have trusted God. They had faith and something still didn't work out the way that they expected. And maybe you have been kind of feeling numb and you've been feeling forgotten about God. And while everybody is rejoicing about the new year and fresh start, maybe you're really still trying to heal because last year or moments prior to that have really broken your trust with God, where you felt like the discouragement and the disappointment has driven you to a place where you are struggling to believe. And maybe you still have a smile on your face and you're pressing through and you're trying to not allow your heart to be hardened, but you're watching everybody else get blessed with the same things that you prayed and you fasted for and you trusted God. And now you're in this place where you're like, God, Do you even see me anymore? Do you even hear my prayers? This episode is really for someone who is in that place. And I wanted to share this story. Of course, at the top of the year, I wanted to do, of course, like a new year, new resolution type of podcast, but that really wasn't on my heart. And I really believe that this is for that specific person. But in all transparency, like I said, 2022 was a very difficult year for me. Even on my birthday, I struggled with depression. I woke up and I did not want to leave my room. Like it was really bad. And I had been struggling with depression for about two months and I was still functioning and pressing through. But day by day, it seemed like my heart was getting harder and I wanted to spend less and less time with God. I was experiencing just a lot of testing of my faith. And it felt like I was being crushed last year. And I continued again to press through and to smile and to read my word and pray even when I didn't feel anything. But it was very discouraging. And I remember crying out to God towards the end of the year. And I was like, God, I don't want to go into the new year feeling like this. I feel like I've been fighting through my emotions. I've been fighting to trust you even when, you know, I've been hit with disappointment after disappointment. And I just can't seem to shake this. So as the end of the year was approaching by, it was like the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, and I was still feeling that resistance. I just made a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to trust you and continue to declare by faith, even though my heart feels the opposite way. I'm going to continue to believe that you are good because you are, even when my emotions don't line up. So to be honest, I went into the new year still you know, feeling disappointment and discouraged, but choosing to fight and to stand on the character of God anyway. 
And I was still battling back and forth with like, when am I really going to have peace about this? God, like you said that you understand the cares of my heart and I don't want to feel this way towards you. So please help me. And so I feel like I got my answer yesterday morning when I was in prayer and God led me to Psalms 139. And I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation, but I'm going to also highlight it in the New Living Translation. And it says, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak, even before I start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. For your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There is no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. Verse 13. You form my innermost being shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I even became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of the sand on every shore. When I wake each morning, you're still with me. Now, I love this passage of scripture so much because one, it's written by David and I really admire David and God's relationship and the intimacy. I admire how David responds to God's love, even when he doesn't deserve it. And I really admire how David pushes past his emotions He's honest and vulnerable with God, no matter how upset he is, even when he feels forgotten and abandoned by God, he tells him. But then at the end of every single venting session that he has, it always transitions into praise. And he begins to remind himself about the goodness of God. He begins to encourage himself about God's faithfulness and his character. And so in this passage, he's really expressing God's love for not just him, but for all of us. He's reminding us that God knows our every single thought before we even think them, that there's nowhere that we could go to escape from his presence. And it's important that we remember these things in this time when you are really going through emotionally because the lies that come to your mind is that God is not with you or God does not care or because this did not happen this way, then you know something must be wrong with God's timing or maybe he forgot. But in this passage, we are reminded of God's character. And God's character is something that we can stand on when it seems like everything else around us looks like the opposite of what God promised us. God's character is what we can stand on when it looks like a promise is late or the reward that God promised us hasn't come to pass. His character of being loyal, of being faithful, of being a promise keeper, of a God who exists outside of time. These are the things that David is reminding us in this moment. And I really want to highlight a passage of that scripture, and I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation because I believe that it communicates exactly what I needed to be reminded of in that moment. 
um, and it's verse 16 through 17. And he says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Now, the reason why this hit me like a ton of bricks, even though I read it several times, is because I began to immediately think about all the disappointments and things that I encountered last year and the things that really caused my heart to become hard towards God. And it was all rooted because things did not work out in my timing. I was disappointed because I felt like I heard God say he was going to do something at a certain time and it did not come to pass. Therefore, in my mind, I automatically assumed that God was a liar or that whoever gave me the word was lying, right? I began to turn on God emotionally because I really had faith that this thing was going to happen. And I did not have any other way to express this disappointment besides bitterness and anger. And those thoughts began to take over my mind. And it wasn't until I sat down and I journaled and I wrote the thoughts out and I wrote out the scripture. And then I realized that God is the ultimate planner. If you've ever felt like God is always late or God is never on time or God's timing is never your timing and you've been upset by that, as many of us have, we really have to take the context of this scripture and apply it to every situation. David is reminding us here that God has every day of our lives recorded in his book. Every moment has been laid out before a single day had even passed. So this means that God is not late. God is actually operating according to his plan that was set before we were even here. So what we see as a disappointment in God's timing is really just a misalignment of our expectations because David is alluding to the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that says, for I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. What's interesting about God is he's not making up his plans as he goes. Every single day of our lives is intentional. It says that he's the author and finisher of our lives, which means that he knows those in-between chapters that we don't know. He knows the details. He knows the reason why things need to take a little bit longer or things need to speed up because he always has the higher view. And so what disappointment and discouragement tries to get us to do is at first it starts off subtle where you just kind of shake the disappointment off. But then as it continues to build, your heart becomes hard. You spend less time with God. You now don't respond in faith when he's beginning to nudge you. And then you start to turn bitter because you see everybody else experiencing the manifestation of what you prayed for. But in reality, God has not forgotten about you. God is operating in his divine timing and it's not random. It's not to harm you. It's not a plan to give you disaster and cause you to be anxious and disappointed and discouraged. It's his timing and it's all to bring him glory. One of the passages of scripture that irritated me the most was when Mary and um, Martha's brother had died, Lazarus, and You know, they told Jesus and Jesus intentionally waited two days after Lazarus was dead in order to go back to heal him or to raise him up. And I remember reading that and I was like, the man was sick when Mary reached out and said, your friend Lazarus is sick. Like, can you help him basically? And Instead of responding right away and going to heal him from the sickness, he waited until he died. And as someone who has an expectation that God is a healer, you would expect him to show up before he died in order to save him. But yet he said, Lazarus sickness is not unto death. And it is so that the glory of God can be revealed. And so when Jesus finally did get to where Lazarus was, everyone was standing around and they were weeping and everybody was frustrated because they couldn't understand how Jesus was the son of God and had all this power, but he couldn't save Lazarus. And really he had all of the authority and power, but he was operating according to God's plan. It wasn't a surprise to God that Lazarus was going to grow sick and die. 
that was an intentional setup so that the power of God could be revealed to the people that were around him. Because even Jesus, when he prayed, he said, Father, I know that you hear me always, but I'm praying out loud so that these people will know that you sent me. So this was an intentional setup by God so that the Son of Man could be recognized and the glory of God could be revealed. It wasn't even about Lazarus. It wasn't even about Mary. It was so that the glory of God can be revealed. And I think that that's something that I have really struggled to understand. And there's a maturity that God has been developing in me when it comes to my expectations and how to handle disappointment, because it is very hard when you are putting your all into something and you are believing with all of your, you know, the faith that you have. And something still doesn't work out. And it it's one thing for it to happen one time, but for it to happen over and over again, or for it to be that one core thing that you were holding on for, and it didn't happen. And then you have to constantly remind yourself, okay, you know what? God has plans to prosper me, not to harm me. God is an intentional God. This is not the end of my story. And you have to do that over and over again. It's difficult. It is very difficult. And that's why... I love standing on God's character. Your emotions may change. Your situation may change. The people around you may change. But one thing that will never change is the character of God. God will always be a faithful and loyal God. He will always be a God whose thoughts towards you are precious. That word precious means greatly loved or treasured by someone high price of great value, not to be wasted. God handles his people with intentionality, with care. And the enemy just has a field day with disappointment. And he really tries to rise up this pride in us where we feel like, you know what? I know better than God. My plans and my timing of when that was supposed to happen is better. And it's such a sneaky thing because we really are hurting and grieving, you know, the things that we wanted to come to pass. But pride can so quickly sneak in where you are now exalting your expectations above God. And that's in such a dangerous place to be. And so if you are in that place and you have been holding on and you still haven't seen what God has promised you and you've done all that you can, what God is really telling you today is to stand on his character. Remind yourself of who God is. You have to do that in these times, even in this year. Because while everybody's giving out words about what God's going to do and everybody on YouTube is telling you, you know, the amazing things that they have planned and all these other things. And you have to bring yourself back and remember the character of God. Remember that God's word will not return back to him void. What that means is when he releases a word over your life, it's not coming back to him unfinished. God doesn't do unfinished blessings. He finishes every single thing that he started. And it's so important that we do this on a daily basis. Even in the moments, there were moments last year where I was so numb and over things that I didn't even care to try to push past my emotions. I didn't even care to journal because I was just so exhausted from believing And I just had to keep reminding myself. There were days where I would just sit in his presence and I would say, you have good plans towards me. I know I don't feel it right now, but you have good plans towards me. And journaling, I've always talked about the power of journaling and not just journaling um, to spend time with God and to, you know, write down scripture, but also to write down your thoughts. There is so much that goes on in your head and the enemy has a field day because you can't see your thoughts until you write them down. So sometimes you may think that you are hearing something and it feels like your own thoughts, but it's really just the thoughts of the enemy that are just swirling in your mind and taking control of your emotions. And the whole idea is to get you to be separate from God. And so journaling is one of those things that it grounds you, it roots you back in the word of God, and it it helps you to stand on a firm foundation. So if you don't have a good quality journal that you can just have structure and not get distracted and really just have a place where you can just let it all out, please go get one. 
I recently created one. It's called the Cast Your Cares Journal. You can get it on Amazon and it's very structured, very simple and easy to apply. It has one section where you spend your daily time with God and you have three things that you're grateful for. You have a section to write out scripture and then you have a reflection section because it's important that you spend that time with God every day. But on the opposite side, it has a section for you to analyze your thoughts. And this is really important that you do this daily because again, think about how many thoughts you have a day. Think about how many micro moments you have where a thought comes through your mind, you don't dismiss it. And now all of a sudden you're having to deal with the fruit of it, whether it's anxiety or it's panic or it's disappointment or it's anger or bitterness towards God. A lot of those things can be avoided if we keep track of our thoughts. And this is something that I've been doing for the past couple of years. And it has really transformed not only my relationship with God, but my ability to trust him in every circumstance. It's a very, very powerful tool. Again, you can get that journal on Amazon. It's a nice, thick, wide journal. It has plenty of space for you to write, even if you have large handwriting. And it also has two bonuses for those times where you just are struggling to figure out where to start or you don't even know how to fight what it is that you're feeling. We have a scripture reference sheet that's categorized by emotion to help you win the war against your mind. This is something that I go to often because if I'm feeling disappointed and at the time I just don't know any scriptures, I can go right back to this section. It's going to tell me a good four scriptures that I can go to to stand on and fight this battle. It also includes journal prompts for those days when you just need some inspiration. If you've ever had one of those days where you're just in God's presence and you don't know where to start, what to talk about, these journal prompts are something that you can quickly apply and get you started. So I'll go ahead and leave the link in the show notes for that. But the point is, I really want you guys to start journaling how you're feeling and taking authority over these thoughts. Living your life by your emotions leads to instability, but managing your mind and journaling your thoughts leads to a prosperous life. So definitely take the time, journal out how you're feeling, even if you feel numb while you're doing it. By the time you begin to journal everything out, there will be a transformation that takes place. And remind yourself every day as you spend your time with God that God cares about you. He cares about the promises that he makes to you. God is a great gift giver. And again, it definitely is not in our timing. But when we remember that God is the ultimate planner, that he's always operating according to his plan and his plans are to prosper us and not to harm us, we can be rooted in a firm foundation. So I hope this has been encouraging for you all. If you know someone that needs to hear this episode, send them the link. Heck, buy them a journal so they can start this journey off right. You never, everybody's smiling these days and pretending like they're okay and we're all pushing through, but you never know who needs this. So I hope this has been helpful for you all. Definitely don't forget to share the episode link with a friend and check the link in the show notes for the journal that I mentioned called Cast Your Cares. I love you all so much and I'll talk to you on the next episode.